In this video, I will show you how access lists can be used for troubleshooting and debugging. Let's get to it. In this lab, I have two routers on a point to point. So I have R1 and with loopback 0, which is 1.1.1.1 slash 32 and then loop back zero on r2 and that's 2.2.2.2 slash 32 and then i have a slash 24 in between the two routers 10.1.1.0 slash 24 so dot one for r1 and dot two for r2 so as part of this configuration on r1 let's just hop into r1 and we check what do i have under gigabit zero zero so I have 10.1.1.1 and a slash 24. And it's the same thing on R2. I'll just copy this configuration. So 10.1.1.2 slash 24. In addition to that, on R1, I have configured, as I said, loopback zero, which is here. and the same on R2. To ensure I have connectivity between the two loopbacks, I have configured static routes. So run inc rp root. So it's an rp root for the loopback zero on router 2, 2.2.2.2, .2 and pointing at router 2 gigabit interface 0, 0. I run the same command on R2. And here I have a static route for loopback zero on R1, pointing at gigabit zero slash zero on R1. So I should have connectivity between the two loopbacks. And if I run my ping command from R1 towards loopback zero on R2, and I source it from loopback zero. So we can confirm we have connectivity between the two loopbacks. Now, I want to do some troubleshooting in the event, for example, that somebody tells me I can't ping uh, loopback zero on R2 when I source traffic from R1, or I can't, uh, I can't send any, uh, some type of traffic to R2. So one of the things that I do during troubleshooting is to debug, but you have to be very careful with debugging. Sometimes if you debug in and there is an awful lot of traffic, which normally is the case, you actually risk taking the box down. The box will be over overwhelmed, the CPU will spike and you will lose connectivity to the box. So it's not recommended to debug on production nodes and definitely not when it's not in a very, very controlled manner. So one of the things that I do sometimes when I'm forced to debug and I have no means to run a packet trace and so forth, I will debug in a controlled manner by using an access list. So I will start by configuring an access list and it has to be an extended access list. So if I want to, if I'm troubleshooting traffic source from loopback zero on route to one, I'll just set it up here. And I will use destination any. So this is basically all what I want to capture is traffic coming in from host 1.1.1.1 going to destination any. Normally in access lists, you will always consider the implicit deny. So you don't want to break traffic and you will add the permit IP any any at the end if that is the intention. Now, in this case, I'm not applying this access list to an interface. So I'm not dropping any traffic. I'm not filtering any traffic. I'm filtering the debugging. So it's perfectly fine to keep the access list as it is without adding the permit IP any any. So now that I have my access list, show IP access list 101. So again, what I'm tracking or I'm filtering is all traffic coming in from host 1.1.1.1, destination any, and this is on R2. So now that I have my access list in place, I can debug 
IP packet and here I will add my access list and then the keyword detail. So my debug is in place. What I'm going to do now is to actually hop back in into R1 and source a ping from loopback0 towards loopback0 on R1 towards loopback0 on R2. So ping 2.2.2.2 and I will source it from loopback0. I do a repeat of just one ping should be enough so we don't get overwhelmed with the debug. So one ping is successful. And we go back to R2 and we see the result of our debug. So quite a bit of information here. So we can see that IP 1.1, that is S for the source, going to destination 2.2.2.2 is an RCMP packet type 8. And we can see some information about the FIB. The source interface is gigabit zero zero. So now let's see what happens if, for example, we're doing a telnet source from source from R1 loopback zero. So let's go back to R1 and I run my telnet session source from loopback zero. And I believe this syntax is RPv4 and then a slash source interface and then I'll put loopback zero. So I'm doing a telnet to loopback zero on router two. That's 2.2.2.2. .2 source and it's an IPv4 and it's source from loopback zero. Okay, let's hit return. The connection is refused because I haven't set it up to be accepted on R2. Let's go back into R2, and here we, we see the results of the debug. So what do we have here? We Again, we see it's an RP packet that came in source from 1.1.1.1, as expected. Destination is 2.2.2.2, as expected. The TCP source, so that's the port that initiated the session, the tenant session on R1, that's 33659. The destination is the known port address for 10 net, which is port 23. So here you can see there is a way to use access lists if you are forced into debugging and having this access list will allow you to run a debug in a much better controlled manner and lower your risks substantially uh, so you don't actually uh, hinder your router or the CPU in your router. So I hope this has been interesting and you found it informative Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next session.